everybody! It is the first Friday of August. Happy August. I'm Gayam Bruno, host and producer of Between the Sheets podcast. Thank you for tuning in. We have a wonderful show tonight. Um, and we are on the first and third Friday of every month. Follow me on Instagram, QTE Brat. And of course, like the Facebook page, Between the Sheets podcast. We have some favorites, some oldies, some new. Um, and the topic is going to be a very interesting one. I teased you guys about saying you'll join us on a journey for spiritual enlightenment and um, self-realization and growth with medicine. So we'll find out exactly what that is. But you guys aren't stupid, so you probably know what it is. I'm just kind of like being very politically correct. Um, but thank you for joining us. Also, call in. We want to hear your questions. 323-524-2599. And I'll start going around the room. Um, but first, hold on. I, I, guys, let me just say, um, now that I have a public forum, um, Thank you guys for really um, reaching out and got, and sort of being with me this last few days um, when I uh, my cat passed, Lily. So I just want to say thank you so much. Um, you guys know the story. Read it on my Facebook page. But it was a little shocking at first. But in the end, it was um, how she wanted it. And um, it was just a really beautiful transition. So um, thank you for supporting me. And thank you for all your love and um and I just want to say thank you. So I'm going to dedicate this show to Lily Bruno, Lily Mae uh -huh. Bruno. Um, so there she's always in my heart. So thank you. So let's start going around the room. We have Cara Noble dressed very festively this evening. Good evening. I'm going to take off my mask. There is actually a bachelorette party taking place in my house as we speak. And um, so this is just part of my outfit. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi, Cara. Cara. Do you, um, you don't have a picture of your masterpiece. She finally completed her Taj masterpiece of mosaics. And if you have not seen it, it is magnificent. Go to her Facebook page, Cara Noble, and it's amazing. So she is uh, going to be working on something else. I love your collarbones. You know how sexy, you know, like, I'm so excited I have mine. I mean, they're so sexy. Yes. Yeah, that's nice <laughs> baby. So um, I'm going to jump to Cheryl Murphy. Um, everyone knows Cheryl. Cheryl, how have you been? Thank you. I'm so happy that you are joining us and you've been joining us more often. So thank God for COVID yeah, <laughs> in a way. Hey, I'm, I'm thankful to be here and see all of you beautiful faces tonight. I mean, this is such a joy. I always look forward to seeing you guys. So thanks well, so, for having me back. Yeah, well, we love you. So we I love all of you guys. And then we have, oh, Mara Shane went through a hair transition in two seconds. <laughs> um, and then we have Mara Shane, resident runway model of Between the Sheets. <laughs> I'm doing a smiles right now. Can you tell? <laughs> what have you been, Quarantini? What have you been doing? Well, I've been really busy. Um, I've been working on my art a lot. Um, I just finished a painting that's going to go to one of the girls that co-hosts with you on your show, Delisha. Um, and I've been just getting a lot of things ready on my website. Yay. Yeah. And you have a new your... Instagram page, too, and stuff for your art. So that's wonderful. Yes. Yes. And then, of course, someone that we've missed... I missed her profusely, the yin to my yang, who's still on mute. Take it off, Kim. Kimberly Sanchez. <laughs> Dude, you think this was my first Zoom meeting or some shit? It's not the case. That's all I'm doing lately. Sorry. Um, yes. Yeah, I, you know, I, I've been moving and I got a new car and it's just been, life's been like just running really fast, you know? Kim's running in the fast lane now. <laughs> and then... Now we have one of my BFFs, my soul sister. Um, she was part of the second incarnation of Between the Sheets. She's, you know, I keep forgetting to call her to say, hey, join us. Because, well, hold on. You're used to always be in Rome. I keep forgetting it's COVID and you're right here in our backyard. But I want to welcome back Durga McBroom. Hi, everyone. Yeah, hey, I've, been here. I've been here since Christmas. So <laughs> I know. And I've like, oh, <laughs> forgot all about her. Uh, but anyway, so glad to have you back. Um, I, I love what you bring to the show. So it's uh, and this is a topic that's up a lot of people's alley today. It's a very curious topic. Um, it's uh, it's booming now. Um, but uh, without further, further ado, because we could talk a lot of shit. But um, I want to <laughs> bring on one of my goddess sisters. She is amazing. It's Carol Benton. 
I'm just going to read this and then we move on because I get bored of this shit. A clinically certified hypnotherapist, transformational coach, and cannabis practitioner. She, oh, I did. Okay. She has a previous career as a DJ and music director, just so you know. Um, <laughs> and she has a passion. She brings personal touch to the evoke, evoke, evocative music sets. God, did you really have to use all these big words? Um, <laughs> The psychedelic cannabis circles that she calls transformational cannabis experiences. Um, and you know what? Instead of reading all this shit, she's so certified and so amazing and so brilliant and doing so much amazing work. Um, and I have a shit ton of questions. So without further ado, let's welcome Carol Benton to Between the Sheets. She's a Between the Sheets virgin. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Gayan, and for that beautiful introduction. And thank you everybody for having me on the show. It's so exciting to be here. Yeah. Um, fire so away. Us, let's start with, we'll get into the good stuff, but you know, tell people sort of, besides being a DJ, how you came about to be a hypnotherapist. Did you have a life before the DJ? Um, what mo What brought you to this? and you find your passion in it, and then all the stuff with the cannabis, so all that other stuff. Yeah, it's been an interesting ride, an interesting, interesting trajectory. Um, I had a long career in the radio business from, I started as a DJ at 18, and then a few dec decades fast forward, uh, and wrapped that up, and it was right about the time that cannabis was becoming uh, adult use legal in Colorado. So I decided to go to Oaksterdam and do a deep dive and a deep study into cannabis. And then that led me to, uh, that led me to a career exploration in counseling. And I went to a Bay Area program called Interchange. And that led to me becoming a psychedelic integration provider and coach. I, I facilitate psychedelic integration circles in Los Angeles and in San Diego. And I'm going on my fourth year doing this now for inner space integration, which is part of the AWARE project. So that led into uh, the, the counseling program that I was in crashed and burned on the forefront of the Me Too movement. And it was definitely prescient and related. So it, it, you can just imagine. So it crashed and burned this 15 year old program that was putting that people really loved and respected. It somehow came out of Burning Man and had some very wise, um, different ways of transforming, if you will. And it just the, the leader went off the rails. And uh, so then I'm, I'm, I had cleared my year because I was going to be part of their leadership team and I didn't know what to do. And it, it crashed and burned. And in September, I was supposed to be starting this whole thing in October. And one of the other people that I am, uh, my cohort that I'm with in the AWARE project and inner space integration, she is a hypnotherapist. And she told me about this amazing school up in Tarzana called the Hypnosis Motivation Institute. And I went, did their introductory class. It's like Hogwarts. It's like you know, <laughs> magic school. And it was a year long intensive. And what I loved about that school is that they had a clinic where you spend six months in a clinic under with supervision. The classes are incredible. The training is incredible. I can't speak highly enough of HMI. And uh, yeah, it's, I think, one of the only nationally accredited hypnotherapy schools in the country. Um, so I went through that whole program, and then the opportunity led me to, so and I'm, and I'm doing integration circles and getting more involved and, and loving this because I've always been a personal development junkie, if you will. I've done all the workshops, I've read all the books, I've done my, you know, decades of therapy. Um, and so then... I came across in March of, oh gosh, it was pretty recent, really, only about a year and a half ago, uh, Medicinal Mindfulness. They were out of Boulder, Colorado. And Daniel McQueen of Medicinal Mindfulness wrote this book called Psychedelic Cannabis. And he has this whole program that trains you to be a cannabis-assisted psychedelic therapy guide. And so I've gone through two of those modules and I'm finishing up the last two uh, in a couple of weeks. And it's just 
really expanded uh, my practice, people's lives. The transformation is really impactful. Cannabis as a as a healing medicine is just beautiful. It's very somatic. We can talk more about that. So I don't want to, I, I feel like I'm talking and talking and talking. So it's okay. You're the guest. You're supposed to. So, I mean, so like explain how one of these workshops, like how, how they get put together and, and like, this is just an extension of healing as through like a, probably therapy. It's another form of alternative therapy. Correct. So yeah. like, pot i mean it's cannabis but in a pot whatever yeah i can't i don't i mean i can't do it it just i'm allergic to it so um but i mean there was only like one time that i tried it and it was something called i think white widow or something like that i don't know that brand oh my god like that i felt like i mean i felt really high but mm -hmm. i felt kind of like when you're on a hallucinogenic it was that was kind of a weird one and then after that i kind of went maybe i shouldn't be doing this anymore because i was driving and stuff and it was not very safe um but so like <laughs> but how like how does this work so do people like they come in they sign up then is it a three-day thing is it a four-day thing is it a 24-hour thing how do you how does it work okay so um what I do is one-on-one uh, -on -one transformational cannabis experiences. And that is part of a, gr a larger package where we would start with having hypnotherapy, a session outside of any cannabis or any substance. And we would get to know each other and you would set an intention for why you're doing this work. And then the ceremony, the session itself, the cannabis part of the session is about three and a half to four hours long. And then there's an integration session on another day, probably in another week. So that's the one-on-one -on -one work. The groups, and I, I have done groups um, pre-COVID, um, Danny McQueen was out here and he came to my office and my studio and, and we had a big group where we packed 30 people into this lovely yoga studio that's in the same building that I work out of. And that, experience is about five hours long and with a break in between two sessions and, and the evocative music takes you in deeper. Um, I'm now doing those groups online actually, or and, and a somewhat hybrid where I only have two people in the studio and have maybe nine people or 10 people online. And that works nicely because people are in their homes and connected to speakers or headphones and sound system of some sort. So the the thing that you spoke about where you tried this white widow strain and you were driving and you got really high and it was, it was, it was quite trippy. That would be kind of not the right setting. To be <laughs> <in>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, because it's psychedelics. It's about set, which is the mindset that you have when you go into a ceremony or into a session. Then there's the setting, which is the container. And then there's the skill set we like to talk about, which is ideally you have a, a mindfulness practice so you can breathe through with a mantra or following your breath, the intensifying energies. And then lastly, in the integration circles, we speak about support, which is integrating the experience, the downloads you might get, the big hallucinogenic things that might happen. So, so it's the right set and setting skills and support. And with cannabis, uh, it, it, this is super intentional in terms of you're taking it like a plant medicine. It, it is a master teacher in some ways. And you know, hey, they say, yeah, it's just pot. But when it's used this way, where you're laying in, in this still position with an eye mask on, and the music, the playlist is super evocative and, and beautiful, really. So you're seeing images, you're remembering things, you're feeling different things in the body. Cannabis is really somatic. So what that means is you, you might feel all of a sudden like this pain in your, in, your, in your chest or something like that. And what is that? And then it brings you to a memory. And then, you know, uh, bring awareness to my body, use my breath to surrender is the mantra and it moves and it releases. And so we as humans, we have all this trauma and you know things that happen. Somebody looks at us wrong, our reptilian brain 
goes overactive and we go, hey, what is that? And, you know, we're constantly stacking trauma, 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 and just stuffing it. When, when animals have a dog, for example, has a trauma, they will stun and then they'll shake. And so this releases, this can bring the physical symptoms actually of shaking and releasing in the ceremony. So, okay, so I did ayahuasca in a different type of setting. I didn't go driving after that. And minus the vomiting that I did with ayahuasca. Um, is, so that's sort of the same experience in, in a way because there was music and stuff like that too. And it was a healing thing. And as weird as it, not weird, as life-changing, because I have to say it was life-changing for me. Um, I don't think I'll ever do it again. But so, you know, so there's ayahuasca, there's cannabis. I mean, I've also heard of mushrooms. Um, mushrooms, there's that whole, like, I don't know what the real word is, but it's mush mushrooms. Um, that's the one. Even like some, the synthetic stuff or whatever, MDMA, LSD. DM mescaline so i mean all, but all that stuff is done in a i mean like i know that other people have done it with you know with the plant medicine or in these environments so it's all the same thing it's just pretty much what substance is being used because it sort of brings out the same thing is that the bottom line one's, le one's legal right and one and others aren't quite yet legal isn't that the that the difference? Um, yes, to both, and there are differences too. So yes. Uh, I just wanted to interject a little bit. Back around the turn of the last century, you know, in the in and up to around the nineteen twenties, there was a big surge into energetic medicine and mysticism and uh, nutraceuticals and herbal medicine and all that kind of stuff started to become more mainstream as opposed to from its original, more tribal, if you will, sort of roots. Then families like the DuPonts and uh, the Rockefellers and things like that, they ordered a study of the efficacy or actually the, the um, financial side of energetic medicine versus pharmaceuticals. Clearly, pharmaceuticals were far more financially viable. So they systematically set out to destroy the reputations of all of those other forms of healing. And suddenly these men, you know, these shaman or whatever, they're quacks, and this is bad for you. And then on top of that, you had um, Harry Anslinger, who was behind the first, you know, um, prohibition against like marijuana, and they made it like, if you smoke weed, all the young white women are going to run out and want to sleep with big black jazz musicians and Mexicans. And it was really about um, trying to keep Mexicans out of the country and prejudice against blacks. And they just tied it all together and made it all big and scary. So now, starting in the 60s, people are coming back to these things that have been around for hundreds and thousands of years, actually. And I think it's great. So I just wanted to add that little history list. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the element of control that uh, happened in that era. And, and it was also to employ all the agents that had been busting people for alcohol. When alcohol prohibition ended, they needed to create the DEA to keep everybody employed. And then Hearst wanted to make paper out of timber yep. and hemp was too renewable. So, yeah. Carol, you know, I could really see this being beneficial for PTSD, which more and more people are just coming out and realizing that, you know, even car accidents are PTSD. You know, they're having a lot of anxiety and they're realizing, hey, anytime we do have trauma in our life, you know, that it, it that like the body holds on to it or something, right? And we're, yeah. we're just releasing those emotions. Yeah, there's a beautiful book called The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk, if you've read that one, and that talks about how it, we do keep all that trauma. And that's why I think there's a big push right now. I'm not, I haven't seen the status of it, but the NFL has been wanting to be able to use cannabis because I know firsthand, and I, I put this to the test, when I have hurt my knee or something like that, if I take two puffs, it takes it away. It's amazing. So really, the healing properties of this medicine are big. So why, why do you think like 
mushrooms are illegal and other things like MDMA. I mean, I thought MDMA, which is the, that's the pharmaceutical like name, I guess, um, for ecstasy because, but like, I, I heard it was like legal in Canada and it's treated like with psycho and psychotherapy and stuff like that. But like, why is all this stuff illegal? And it, is it just for money if it's helpful? I think Durga hit it on the head when she talked about, uh, you know, the DuPonts and there, there's no money really in cure. There's money in treatment. That's right. That's right. Not to mention the fact that if you think about it, all of these different substances are designed to expand your mind, give you a different perspective on things, a broader perspective on things. And those elite controlling families, it behooves them financially to keep everyone asleep. So, so of course they don't want everybody to start waking up and going, whoa, I didn't realize this is what's going on and what's being done to us. That kind of sucks. So they want to keep us drugged up and uh, with pharmaceuticals and asleep. Mm -hmm. Although the two, the toothpaste is out of the tube and uh, MDMA, for example, is uh, almost legal. It, it's about, it's finishing phase three clinical trials right now. And the next step is expanded access. So expanded access clinics are going to be online within another year. The treatment is going to be very <laughs> expensive, but because, it, but it's, it's happening. And psilocybin, both psilocybin and MDMA have uh, breakthrough status with the FDA. So that means they can't keep these medications from the public at large. MDMA for treatment resistant depression and, and sorry, no, PTSD, treatment resistant PTSD and psilocybin for treatment resistant depression and other things too. I mean, there's been studies for smoking cessation with psilocybin there there's and of course um a host of other things uh social anxiety and autism with PT, with mdma and things like that so alcoholism even there are substance yes alcoholism as well i mean bill wilson the creator of uh AA. 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 he used lsd in, for the first five years that he had created mm -hmm. aa it was legal in canada the treatment of alcoholism with LSD. And uh, then the fellowship said, no, you got to stop this. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole movement right now uh, for psychedelics in recovery to, uh, it's a whole group. You can find them on Facebook. So. And what does so, a psychedelic actually do that changes you from being trapped in a trauma? How does it help you expand into your new world? What does it do internally to during that session, so we're talking uh, we're talking about different substances, but I would say in a broad stroke, it will release the stored trauma in the body. It will help people to reframe uh, difficult memories, processing them, and in the case of psilocybin and some of these other substances, ayahuasca, it also creates new neural pathways and new synapse connections and so it's but yeah. what what i don't understand so i mean i've i've used all of that recreationally <laughs> like a lot um <laughs> lsd and mushrooms and mdma i mean you know all of that i don't i don't maybe because i took too much of it for a medicinal thing is that the deal like you take a smaller dose of it because i can't imagine functioning like on the mushrooms I've taken. Uh, I'm what? not you take? <laughs> so so there's microdosing and then a big macro dose if you will will also help you to purge certainly with ayahuasca and and with mushrooms too it can release you can releasing happens with tears with uh throwing up with uh you know the other end and and uh, and yawning <laughs> is a release and and so so the macro dose has its place. And that's what I think also helps to dissolve perhaps limiting beliefs and create new um, pathways, but perhaps microdosing too, because there's not enough 
information. There's not enough studies been done on it. So the macro dosing, I'm kind of interested in. First of all, I want I wanted to try mushrooms not that long ago. And so, of course, you know, I get them. And I was going to do it a friend of mine. And um, comes the day we do it. And I'm looking at it. I'm like, I don't want to do this. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And she's like, why? Well, if you're not going to do it, I'm not going to do it. And it's sort of like I listen to my body or my intuition or my inner voice that said it's not time yet. I also was scared because not that I'm a scaredy cat, but I've never done it. So I, but I read about things. So I just didn't really feel that I could do it and someone else do it and then sort of know what was going on and sort of like taking care of each other and stuff like that. So then I thought, okay, we'll do it at some point, but I think we need a facilitator um, because I, I, I just didn't want to be responsible if, for someone, even though they willingly were wanting to do it. So the microdosing, I mean, for the past year, at least that's when it came on my radar. I started reading about uh, microdosing, and now that's legal or not legal? Not we, yet. As long as mushrooms are not legal, period. It doesn't matter how you use them, what small amount. It's still illegal. Well, so let's. Th there's there's a little gray there because they were decriminalized in Oakland. Actually, all plant medicines were decriminalized in Oakland, and they were decriminalized in Santa Cruz, and they were decriminalized in Denver. And what that means is that they are lowest law enforcement priorities. So for personal use, um, I think you're okay. Nobody's going to bother you with that. The therapeutic aspect, the, the psilocybin is on the ballot in November in Oregon. And I believe the way that is written, it's going to allow for the therapeutic use of it. I'm, I'm not 100% but if I'm understanding it correctly. So there's a big movement, there's a big push to make these uh, medicines available. And in San Diego, where I live, uh, UCSD, USANA is having two clinical trials with psilocybin, synthetic psilocybin right now too. Synthetic? Mm. Yeah, so they can control it because the, the organic matter, um, and, and I'm not that drilled down on that either, but I know that the organic matter can vary in potency and if it's older, you know, so oh. and then weighing it out. So they try to for these clinical trials, they need to get some sort of uh, consistency so the research can prove out. I guess so. standardized. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I'm curious about though in terms of dosage, microdosing versus macrodosing. What is the dosage? So anywhere between, I would say, you know, it, well, so microdosing it means subperceptual. It means that you won't notice it. So it, 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 we have to take into account your, uh, it's, it's trial and error on a certain level. Um, anywhere from one grams to two grams of psilocybin is probably a starter dose. So anywhere between <laughs> 0.5 to one gram is probably a micro dose. But then oh. even less than that, because some people can, you know, it, it, and they're microdosing also LSD. So, and mm -hmm. sometimes less actually is just as effective. So it really means to be subperceptual, not noticeable. Um, and there's a couple of different ways of doing it. Paul Stamets has created this whole protocol called the Stamets stack, where you're putting in um, medicinal mushrooms like lion's mane and some niacin with that too which can i guess create flushing of the i don't know of the of the body I've, i'm not a big fan of niacin but uh that's yeah. flushing of the body yeah mm -hmm. i don't think any woman over 50 would want to try that we just get that naturally i, I really don't think we need a mushroom to help us flush okay yep. <laughs> Lion's pain is a great medicine that's right now yes mara mara has a question um, I don't know if we're going to, if it's too soon to segue into this topic, but I'm really interested in hyp hypnotism and what kind of a person, is every person going to be able to be hypnotized if they're willing or, because I tried it once with this one woman and I could feel the energy coming over me with her hands over me and 
but I never fully submitted into it. Like I was at one point I felt like I was going to fall asleep, but I would be interested in knowing about that with treatment. Sure. Um, so most people I would say can be hypnotized and frequently we're in a state of hypnosis as we go out, go throughout the day. It means that you are in a state of suggestibility and when we're driving or seeing a movie or something like that, we're in that, we're engrossed in what we are uh, involved with. Even in a conversation, there's a, there's a whole um, modality of cognitive hypnosis, which doesn't ever actually put anybody into state. They just talk and, and because the conversation is the hypnosis. So there are a, there is a segment of the population that is really difficult to hypnotize. And they're usually the ones that are very much unwilling to give up control. Yes. And so when I'm having the discussion with somebody as to whether or not hypnosis is, uh, if they're fit for hypnosis, I really stress that they need to lean into it, lean into the, to the imagery that I'm providing and and believe it because otherwise if they resist they they will get those results you know it's kind of the thing whether you think you can or you can't you're right so Carol, I have a question i did hypnosis for to stop smoking um and i stopped for four years then i went back and then i stopped did it again for hypnosis and i did it for seven years so like hypnosis it doesn't, I mean, does it have an expiration life? You know what I mean? <laughs> Shelf life because it's kind of like I was good for four years and then some trigger and then I started. And then I was good for seven years and then some trigger, it started. So is hypnotherapy, should it be considered like in a way when you go to your regular, like a regular therapist, you kind of need a tune up to keep it. I mean, I don't know, I'm asking. Hmm. Yeah, I think so. I think it, it depends on the person. Um, and if you're ready to finally let go of those cigarettes, you know, um, I too was able to stop smoking with hypnotherapy and, and it, but, and I had tried to quit three times before that. And so by the fourth time I used hypnotherapy and it worked and it stuck and I haven't gone back. Wow. So yeah, so, so uh, it really is a matter of whether you're um, ready for it. And we, I teach self-hypnosis skills as well. And certainly meditation, uh, hypnosis is a lot like a, uh, a, a deep meditation or a, a focused awareness. So as you can focus your mind on a particular outcome or a particular um, state of being, you're changing your state of being. And that's what all of it, cannabis, psychedelics, hypnotherapy, uh, it, it, it's changing your state of being and moving you towards what you want as-, as <laughs> So how do you deal with the triggers? Cause I mean, you know, it's kind of like people who are ha have addictions and everyone is, I don't care what anybody says, everyone is susceptible or has something wired in them for addictions. It just depends on what your addiction is or what your, pick your poison. Um, so of course, you know, mine has been smoking, um, but like, like, so for example, like there is triggers, like, even though I want to quit smoking and I did want to quit smoking and I stopped for seven years, but a trigger came up. So how does one like knowing that's still a pattern because it's a deep set thing, you're an addict, I'm an addict. I mean, not a, I mean, a cigarette addict. So what makes you stop? to do it, like you stopped with hypnosis, right? But like, how did you deal with the triggers or the traumas? Like, did you replace it with something? I mean, yeah. how does that work? So it, it, the, it, it's replacing it with um, positive things, you know, especially initially. But, you know, I, I was just ready to let go of it. And and uh, for me, it, wanting and, wanting to be healthy and and breathe easily was more important to me than the triggers and so that would be reinforced also in hypnosis and seeing what the triggers were about and we can eft is a wonderful emotional freedom technique you know tapping it's a, oh tapping yeah tapping exactly. like this yeah so on meridians uh and and you you first give yourself a message it's a whole protocol that i'd be happy to share with you at some point but tapping is a great way to deal with triggers and cravings. And 
So I teach people skills to, to deal with these triggers. And, and yeah, I think you're right. Coming back for a tune up or going, it helps, but it's really, it's really, what do you want for yourself and how do you want to feel? Now, like, now you brought up, I was going to say AAA, but I meant Alcoholics Anonymous, AA. <laughs> uh, so my you, know, time. you said the Bill, Bill W guys, that's his name, Bill W? Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. whatever. Um, LSD, he did LSD for the first X amount of years when he started. So, I mean, what is your feeling about, you know, like Alcoholics Anonymous versus trying to overcome an addiction with these other different modalities and treatments? Good question. Um, I, I am uh, very grateful that I haven't had to go through any of those programs. And so from what I know, Alcoholics Anonymous has a very strong faith-based component to it. Mm -hmm. And the meetings and the fellowship is very important. Uh, the substance, and, and it's very supportive. I know people who've had great success with AA. And then there are other groups that are uh, secular. I think SMART is another one. And, and then these other substances get to the root of it also, um, ayahuasca, um, ibogaine and things like that. So they, these are big guns to go after uh, opiate addiction and alcoholism as well. So um, I'm not sure, did I answer your question? I'm, I'm... Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I was just saying like, you know, like, yeah, you did. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I got the question, so good. I'm glad I answered it. <laughs> like, uh, hold on, I had to like process it and go, is that the answer I wanted? Yeah. You know, you know what this feels like, Carol, is that this would be, hypnosis would be really helpful for that opioid addiction that we're all, a lot of people are on the, all this prescription medication, right? And they're trying to get off of it. Hypnosis would be very helpful for that, right? It can be supportive as an adjunct to other treatments because mm -hmm. there's a physiological component to that mm -hmm. that I think um, it, it needs to be addressed. So, yeah, because it's a chemical dependency. Go ahead, right. um, I'm a kind of person that, like, well, I smoked for 32 years. Uh, when I was thinking about quitting, I, I quit for four months, and my husband at the time would not stop bringing cigarettes in the house, and I started smoking again. And he was away for a while. So uh, I was by myself and I may, gave him my word I was gonna quit. And I went for one hypnotherapy session, one. And I was ready to do it. And I'm extremely suggestible. I'm <laughs> extremely open to surrendering that way. Now I think She's some people- sex too, don't let her kid you. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think we're all there, but that's a different story. Um, but the thing is, I think some people have a harder time surrendering. And one thing about these various um, um, medicaments or whatever you want to call them is they kind of, they get your, your mind that doesn't want to let go. It kind of takes it out of the equation so that you can be present. I mean, I went to India when I was studying, I was, I was recording with my partner youth in my band, Blue Pearl. And he said, oh man, if you want to understand techno, you've got to go to Goa, man. So we got the label to pay for us to go to India. And we're on the beach and there are all these European kids and people in their twenties, and they're all just tripping every day. And they're going to these sunset parties and they're dancing on the beach and as they're dancing. And I was thinking, you know, I can do this meditating. I can get where they're trying to get without taking acid or without doing that. But I don't really have a problem with surrendering that way. So it's very useful for people who have control issues, who don't want to let go of stuff and want to stay in control. You don't have a choice. When you're like doing ayahuasca or whatever, you it's like, I want to be in control. Oh, really? Well, you're going to throw up now. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, is there a possibility that somebody could have a really like a bad trip when they're working with you, um, Carol? Or is that is that not the case because you're controlling the amount? I'm just wondering. Well, so I work with cannabis and cannabis it, it, it's very much personal medicine, personal. So each person will respond differently and 
will respond differently at different times, even to different strains and things like that. So I am creating a very safe and sacred container and uh, people will feel safe and secure and they can also move through some difficult things. In the process of transformational healing, you might feel worse before you feel better. Isn't that always the way? Everyone, um, you're watching Between the Sheets here in the United Broadcasting Network. We're on the first and third Friday of every month. We have guest Carol Benton. Please call in. I'm sure you all have questions. 323-524-2599. That's 323-524-2599. And I was like, well, call now. You too can get a free car. <laughs> You did so well. Thanks. Yeah, 32 years in the business. If I don't have it down now, uh, Cara, I have to say, not to deter, but you look very sexy tonight. I, now, now she has a wrap on. I just, <laughs> you know, my air conditioning suddenly came on and it's blasting right on me. Oh, no. <laughs> and I can't well, move. Because you're half naked. Hello. Oh. <laughs> Seriously. I came from a party and I'm going back to a party. A party, a party. Yes. It's a bachelorette party I'm carrying right now in my garden. Yes, we know who it is. <laughs> I don't. What, Shereen? Oh, there you are. Look at that. The picture's up. Oh, wow. Oh, that, yes, that is oh, the time. The yeah, the as far as new mosaic completed. It's so <laughs> fabulous. Oh, my God. I wish you could zoom in. Thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah. I realized it was three and a half years in the making. Oh, it's <gasps> wow. wow. Uh, did you design that yourself and then just like, or did you use, how did you make that? It's three and a half years in the making. I just started in the middle and worked outwards. <laughs> <laughs> and I, mean, I did. I had a kind of an idea, but I just, um, I just took on each part separately until it was done. And then, oh, next bit. Oh, it's kind of fun. And we were all donating broken glass. <laughs> like <laughs> Annie Lennox said, walking on. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. So, Durga, I'm going to bring you yeah. up. I mean, you've experimented yeah. as well, correct? Yeah, you, I have. I know. I, I, I can tell you that. Um, but do you feel that, have you done it recreationally only or have you done it in a setting as Carol has saying that, you know, obviously she does cannabis, but in other settings, because other people offer other things. Well, I have, I have generally, it's been with the intention of being recreational, but it's turned into something else because I've practiced a spiritual path since I was a child. So in fact, the last time, I, I think it was the last time, no, the time before last that I had, that I, well, the last time I took acid on purpose was for the oh. Uh, I was in India again, so I was there and I was observing all of this, but I figured, you know, I'm here, I went in Rome, whatever, do whatever he's doing. So people would go to these sunrise parties where you go to sleep and you wake up at midnight and you take your dose and go to this party and people would dance until, you know, as the sun came up. So my boyfriend and I go to the party and it's in out in the middle of the jungle in this like castle thing. And there's black lights everywhere we're looking and people are like dancing and gurning is what they call it, making all these weird faces because they're tripping balls. And we, <laughs> up, and we were like, nah, this is not, no, we're not feeling this. So we go outside and we're like, how the fuck do we get back to our house? And um, this girl goes, I know how to get to Anjuna. So we all get on our little bikes and we're now, we come up. So I'm just like, Wah! and I'm tripping really hard and I'm, we're in single file riding behind this girl. Now we're in the middle of the jungle in India. Cool. There are no street lights. <laughs> Only lights are the lights from our bikes. And so we're driving along and she goes on this path and I realize we're driving on the strip between rice paddies. So there's this massive drop on either side. So I've got this internal dialogue going on in my head and I'm like in that scene on the, on the run on the Death Star in Star Wars, we could die, stay on target. No, but I don't know what's gonna stay on target. You can break your legs, stay on target. And I'm staring at her taillight. She finally gets us to our house, thank God. And she's like, bye. She goes, we turned the bikes off and we're plunged into pitch blackness. 
And I'm feeling like all the little spirits around some are being helpful. And then I'd swear something pulled my hair while I was trying to get in the house. And we looked in the house and it was this black gaping mom. We're like, nah. So we went up on the roof terrace and laid out looking at the stars. And at that point, I started to connect with the planet and I could feel the rotation of the earth under me. And I watched a satellite in its elliptic orbit over my head. I saw it move and as it moved, I could feel the earth turning it. And as the sun came up, suddenly we were flooded with life. I heard the rooster next door. The, the Brahma bull started to low in the, in the pasture next door. All these things started to wake up and I was flooded with this connection to the birth of the day. And out of that, I wrote a song called Mother Dawn that I wound up singing with <laughs> Bill. So uh, wow. I turned what was supposed to be recreational into a spiritual thing because the other op option would have been to freak out. And I don't like that. So I just released and relaxed and went with it. See, the only time I've done stuff is usually, is only with like more of a spiritual stuff. I've never been, like, I did mescaline like a long time ago, but I mean, anytime I've tried anything else, it's always been with the spiritual purpose, with an intention <laughs> to grow. Um, I don't know why. I mean, well, of course I am, because I'm always on a journey and I'm always wanting to grow and I'm always wanting to expand and, and, and spirit spiritually and growth. But what is this thing that I hear? It's like LSD light. Anybody heard of something like LSD light? LSD light or MDMA oh, LSD. light? No, it's like LSD, oh. but it's light. It's not like LSD. No, are you talking about GHB? No, she's talking about that's more like MDMA, but 20 minutes. Yeah, no, no, not that one. But I forgot the name of it. Is it 2CB that you're speaking of? That's the one, 2CB. Uh -huh. It reminds me of the yogurt. Yes, the yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> It's a compound, it's a chemical compound created by Sasha Shulgin, who was the chemist up in Berkeley, who uh, one of his favorites, and he created a bunch of different compounds um, for the purpose of healing. You know, he, he became um, a big proponent of MDMA, which I think there's a direct correlation to the, the, the healing and the, the studies that are being done now as, as a result of his work. That's the one, thank you. I keep forgetting it. I've never heard of that. Because I mean, I, I'm like, I've always been, I mean, not that well, I mean, it was like, I've been offered all this stuff because I work in the entertainment business. So it's like, a, like throughout the 30 years, it's like, ding, 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 ding. And I mean, there are certain drugs that are not healing, like cocaine was not healing. Mm -hmm. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. Um, but there's some that I liked. Um, and MDMA was one of them. I, I mean, I, I have to say, if I had to be nostalgic and say, what was my favorite drug? It's MDMA or ecstasy or Molly or whatever. Um, I don't, it, it, that I would say, cause, but I haven't really tried a lot of like mushrooms. Obviously I'm 57, I haven't tried it. Everybody laughs at me going, what do you mean you never tried it? We tried it when we were 20. Um, but there's certain <laughs> things that I haven't tried, but it's, I'm, I'm, I, I must say I am curious to, mm. if it's done in the right setting for the right reason. I almost forgot, also in India, and I got another song out of it. Uh, we went to a beach called Arambol, where there's the sea. Tree. I mean, you want to talk about spiritual. So we took mushroom extract and like covered ourselves in mud and hiked up to the banyan tree and you put your hand on it and you can feel the vibration of the spring and there are all these sadhus meditating around the tree and i wrote this amazing song called uh liquid of life so that was pretty spiritual but the first time i took mushrooms was going to see blade runner with oh my gosh <laughs> oh, wow <laughs> 18 years old that was hilarious oh my god we were crying. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so you know, one of the things that you talk about, Gayanne, is that you were going kind of in the front door. To, you had the intention of going towards spirituality with these entheogens. And I think a lot of kids uh, who, and, and, I, and I think that people need to wait until their brains are developed and all that, but people go in through the back door thinking they're going to party. And then all of a sudden they have this big spiritual experience like you, Durga, as you were saying about that amazing experience in India. So, uh, 
and then they're surprised. They're, the, I think there's a study or a survey done about all the Buddhist monks and how many of them came to their spiritual practices through having had an experience or they, they share having had psychedelic experiences as well. You know, I have a question. Um, how can you tell if this is authentic when you're on something and versus synthetic, it's just a cause of the synthetic drug in your, how can you tell if you're, if it's authentic, you know what I'm saying? Cause you're obviously influenced, you're on something. So, um, it's a good question. And so, uh, we're not going to answer it. No, can I, <laughs> Mine. I can answer it. <laughs> I mean, I have a thought too. Durga, you go ahead. I would say this. It's like what I was saying before. All of what's happening is occurring in your brain. So it's authentic. What is happening is the drug is maybe human oh, brain you- fascinating in the mm-hmm. protection that we develop. We are protection machines from the time we're very young wow. and we experience our first traumas. Our brains start figuring out ways to protect ourselves from feeling certain things. And what these drugs do is push that out of your protective mechanisms out of the way. So I would argue that you're being more authentic than yeah. normal. That's but, really really like traumatic and scary if, if you, uh, if it pushes everything out of the way and you don't have that protection there, you're not in control of what will happen. What you'll well, that's the problem. Through. But, right. but no, Mara, that's, that's the point. problem. Hold on, Mara, that's the problem. And that is why I have never really delved into the psychedelics, like the LSDs and the mushrooms, because it's about control. And I'm afraid to give up control because I don't know what's in there that's going to come out. MDMA is different. Coke was different. Um, different strains of pot. Not all of them are hallucinogenic. But when you get to the mushrooms, which is why probably... I was scared shitless besides the fact is I didn't know you know how I was going to behave, but I didn't know what the hell was going to be like rolling around in there. And I was afraid I was going to have a bad trip. Yeah. And, 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 you know, it's sort of like my first foray into, I'll call it a hallucinogenic, but Carol, you can correct me was ayahuasca. I mean, I, you know, I didn't even graduate. I didn't go from like mushroom. I went straight for the mother <laughs> And I had no idea what to expect. And I sat there in a fetal position for nine hours. Uh-huh. After nine hours, I vomited. But after nine hours, after nine hours, I had to go pee. I had to crawl to the bathroom on all fours because I couldn't feel anything. I was like, oh. what the hell is this? Okay. And, but again, <laughs> as scary as it was, <laughs> The final <laughs> result was life changing. And the trip was a horrible trip. My, it, but, and I'll tell you, I won't tell you the whole story because it's, it's just too long and arduous, but, um, <laughs> but for all nine hours in my brain, I was struggling with one thing and that was fear, fear. Fear has held me back in a lot of chances in my life. So it was, think about if you're scared to do something, if you're, if you're scared of heights or you're scared of jumping or you don't know how to swim and you're scared to get in a pool, think of that rush and that adrenaline for nine hours. Ugh. And that's what I went through. But coming out of that, Gosh. I have to say, Ooh. I'm pretty fearless right now. Why did it, okay, so how it changed your life, Gayan? The way- Is I can take life. chances now. I will take okay. that chance. It, I will not hesitate. I mean, I won't do a reckless move. You know, obviously there's always thinking, but before my, my first thing would be I'd stop because I'd be scared, overthink and talk myself out of it. Mm-hmm. Now I'm like, oh, fuck it. Let's just do it. What is the worst thing that could happen that you hate it? Oh. Or- whatever. Yes, Carol. I think that you were, your internal wisdom was giving you the right message to not do the mushrooms at that time, because you were with another person who had no, who didn't have any experience with that either. And it is really about set and setting and practitioners. (laughs) That's the one thing that 
you, the ayahuasca, you were, were probably with a practitioner who knew what they were doing and could hold space well. Mm -hmm. the, the, two things, it, 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 it's very, yeah, you don't want to leave, you don't want to give up control, Mara, to, to just anybody. You really want to curate the experience so that you have the best outcome. And so finding the right practitioner who is um, in integrity, who's, who's able to uh, hold the space and is super grounded, you know, and, and uh, th this is very important. And there's all kinds of drop downs on the AWARE Project website, which is the AWARE Project which is aware project, no, the awareproject.org. And there's a sitting safe guide and it's all the right questions that you're supposed to ask before you go into a ceremony or, or, or imbibe any of these things. Now I want to talk to Cheryl because she's really quiet. She's, mm. <laughs> get well, up. I'm not going to ask you if you've ever done anything that's up to you to tell us no. but in your field, but if your field, cause you deal with spirituality and stuff like that, yeah. I'm yeah. sure. I mean, you know, I mean, do, do like people in your field sort of dabble and, and try it? I mean, I, and just to get into that deeper spirituality. Yes. I do think people in my field have dabbled in it. Uh, but I, for me personally, when I did dabble in it, I also realized I could get as high or higher naturally, you know, through the meditation, through the Tai Chi, through the connecting with the spirit world. So that's how, um, I believe just from my peers or my colleagues now that that's how, uh, we are tapping into the spirit world. So it is through, you know, it's through practice, of course. And, uh, you know, like Carol was saying, I mean, it made so much sense, Carol, when you said that you needed a professional to guide you on these journeys. Uh, but yeah, but for me, you know, I mean, I tried, you know, marijuana like, like you, uh, you know, gay Ann back then, but it just doesn't, didn't do much, I guess. I don't know. It wasn't a thrill. So I just tried to find my own way of, you know, um, being a seeker and being a, you know, an explorer. And that's when mediumship kind of came into my life. And that really helped me was to get that natural high, so to speak. That's how I always describe it. Yeah. Hey, Kim, how many uh, spiritual journeys you went on? <laughs> And she froze. You're okay, oh, Kim, Kim. You're Kim. muted. Kim, you're muted. Sorry, <laughs> um, I was just saying that none of mine were um, for spiritual purposes. No, <laughs> they were all fun, <laughs> and they were <laughs> they were varying degrees of fun, depending upon uh, whether I followed the instructions and didn't, you know, go. Oh, it's not working. I need more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would like to, I think I would like to experience um, cannabis in a different way. I don't like to feel high. I mean, I've spent so much of my life out of my body. I'm kind of excited about getting into it without anything extra. But I think cannabis interests me. I would like to know more about it. So Carol, I have a question because I mean, I've obviously tried pot and there's different strains, as you said, and um, different, I guess the sativa and the indica. And so like when you, when you like meet someone, is there like one type of strain or one, one only that you use with all your clients or how do you determine like what journey or what, what, like which one they, which one you use, like which medicine for each person. And now may I just add that now you're on zoom, right? So it's a kind of different. You're not even there to watch over them. How does it work? So, okay. So there's a recipe that Daniel McQueen has come up with for the psychedelic strain and uh, or psychedelic recipe, if you will. It, the, the, can, the indica and the sativa and the hybrid is really, we are using that to measure and have ratios, but now it's all about the terpenes and the different effects that different terpenes from different strains have. 
So ideally, I'm when I'm working with someone one on one, um, they will bring a contribution to the experience because I don't sell or provide cannabis, but we can share. It's legal to share. So they bring a strain that's high in THC, very low in CBD because we use CBD as an antidote for being too high. It's a wonderful tool for that. Um, and we create a blend that uh, my psychedelic blend from the ceremonies that I've had here in person, it's probably a, a collection of about 10 to 12 different strains balanced with a third indica, a third hybrid and a third sativa. And there's- And you smoke it, right? We smoke it, yes. And yet I've also seen people who have done the journey experience with an edible or with uh, vaping it. Vaping it is some, it's easier on the lungs. Um, and I, I, people have experienced the journey without smoking it. It's not required. It, if you go, you can also go in deep like a meditation and it can be quite evocative. Yeah. Cara, what was your question, Cara? Oh, online. Yeah. Online. I wondered how, 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 how difficult it is for Carol to orchestrate when people are just in little squares. I know. Well, so uh, we have a share, we, we start, we come together like this, where we'd all share and we set intentions. And then we uh, have music, we're using music to set the experience. And everybody's created their nest, they're, they're um, either they're on the floor in their bed, and they have their various totems or crystals or intentions nearby, and connected to either headphones or a good sound system and they put on eye shades and then it's me guiding you through the experience and and then bringing you back and we all imbibe together with an invocation uh that creates a very cohesive circle experience if you will so as they're going through this i mean are they talking sometimes are they just like within themselves i mean what i mean how do you facilitate do you bring do you like dialogue with them and bring something out in them for discussion so well, that is so on the in the one-on-ones that i'm doing in in my office then i will dialogue with you I'll, i will ask you know what is what is your experience or do you want to share or, or you know it, i'm available to go deeper in the experience in the um in the group online I'm available via texting. So I'm avail I'm always available with a phone, but no, you're not necessarily speaking out. Some people are doing it as a, uh, you know, a couple might be together in, in the room, but you're pretty quiet. The music is what's guiding the journey. And then I'm also interjecting like a DJ would, but not quite the same, you know, every other song, but I'm interjecting a little bit and, and guiding the experience to, to bring you in deeper and, and help you to release more and, and visualize more of where you want to go. So, so like, I'm curious, like with, with the ayahuasca, it was those goddamn drums. And every time those, I seriously, every time those freaking drums, I would feel it coming up to here. And then it would like the minute the drums would stop, I'd be, okay, I'm safe. I'm not gonna throw up right now. So what kind of music it, it, that, that do you play for your journeys? Cause I'm a DJ too. Yeah, <laughs> we need to talk about that sometime, you know, yeah. and reminisce, do the alphabet soup thing. So exactly. <laughs> um, so what you're speaking of with ayahuasca are the Icaros, which uh, are, are designed to get people to start releasing and and uh, moving and, and they're doing prayers for individual people mm -hmm. and they have assistance and the whole thing. The music that I'm using is, uh, a con I love this genre of music. It's so interesting. I, I'm deeply in love with this genre of music and it's kind of journey music. It's, it's it, you know, Cara, you'd probably remember it as Buddha Bar or Hotel Custis. Is it like, it's not the binaural beats, is it? Maybe, but not really. You well, it's know, like so electronica, like the Buddha Bar is kind of electronica. It is. So, but okay. I, so I'm using, a, actually, I use a lot of classical, contemporary classical. Um, and Audi is, is a favorite of mine, uh, if you know his work. And mm -hmm. uh, I use tribal music, you know, junk, uh, some, some tribal, maybe Amazonian type of music. Mm -hmm. I also really love some of the uh, Vedic stuff, Manish Damore and things mm -hmm. like that. A little bit of Kirtan and, 
and um yeah so it, it it's it's a variety of just as and some electronic music as well but but it's 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 a it's a slow wave and then there's some that punctuate the uh the experience to to take you in deeper so a little bit of the the uh bringing the tempo up sometimes to go to get more evocative i mean music is, i mean the funny part is music in itself is healing mm -hmm. you know what i mean i mean seriously if like i'm sure all of us we have songs that you know if we're in a sad state and, and of course we have to like compound it because we're victims at that point oh poor me pity me you put on the that horrible ret gunching music to make you cry even more to purge, you know, and when you're happy, you, you know, and it really is interesting to me that, you know, really, I mean, music, and obviously there is, a, there is a study and the people have worked with music therapy, you know, and I think it's just amazing how like music therapy that can heal and can um, change, but then if you mix it with what you're doing, that it's like, it's like a marriage that really, it's kind of like um, like you're doing the 100, 180, you know? It's pretty, it's pretty amazing, I think. And you know, Carol, I, what I just wanted to interject here is you, when you have that expertise of being a hypnotherapist like you do, I really feel that you bring it to a whole nother level. You know, you, you've got to be, I mean, it just feels like with that type of a background, you would provide a more nurturing, you know, more compassion, more relaxation to people. So, I mean, it's just gotta be really a, a high caliber feeling. It's just what I get when I get your energy and what you're all about. It, it just really feels like it's the, the whole package there, uh, you know, where you're caring for the person, right? As a whole being, that's what I'm feeling. Yeah. Thank you, Cheryl. Yeah, thank you. I'm, that is definitely my objective is towards healing and health and releasing what no longer serves and and yeah i, I do energy work also so oh, I'm, I'm i'm yeah i, I, I do reiki. that's reiki I'm, right reiki yeah so i'm doing uh, that is also what i'm providing in the one-on-ones and in the circles to 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 in the circles i'm i'm working with the energy with the individual and as a group as well uh that's even better wow that's fantastic what is do, uh, work? one of the Sorry. Sorry. What's I, process work, Carol? Um, yeah, I, it's, you know, the, it's doing processes. So it, okay. it, it's like what we do <laughs> in camp. What we do in camp. Okay. Goddess Camp International. Find <laughs> us on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Car, you're getting more glamorous by the minute. Look I know. <laughs> soon she'll be, soon she'll be oh, naked. I and know, right? She'll complain. She'll be absolutely nude and no one will complain. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, I was going to say I should send you that song I told you that I wrote after going up to the banyan tree. Oh, yes, uh, please. I, it's very meditative and it's it's an amazing song. And there's even like a part, relax, relax, relax. It's like kind of Indian and Oh, kind I of. love that. Thank you. And I, I would love to offer all of you a uh, to join in on a cannabis circle. I'll be doing I'm, I'm uh, the last weekend in September. I'll be doing my next one. I'm taking August off because I've, I'm heading out. But you know what? We'll just do a between the sheets one. Yeah, I'll, I'll facilitate one for you. Be fun. That would be awesome. There's a few girls missing, but um, that would be so awesome. I, I would that would be wonderful. That would be so much fun ish. No, we'll, we'll do a Google Doc <laughs> date and time. No, it, you, I think you'll find it, it, it. It's a safe container. And when you have the intention for healing and you're using it as a medicine, you get into a, the, what we talk about correct relationship or right relationship with the particular plant, with cannabis. And some people tip out into a not very healthy relationship with the plant or they find it that Look, I don't need the plant it. to make me have unhealthy relationships. I do that all good on my own. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious though, like somebody like me, I mean, some of the other things I'm fine with. Um, although I don't, I, I don't like acid that much because I find that I have like these earth shattering realizations, like 10 of them in the first 30 minutes and then I'm stuck tripping for another nine hours, which is like, eh. But um, 
uh, marijuana, I get really high. I mean, like THC, I think I might be a little bit like AN. I might be slightly allergic. I actually, sometimes it's fun, but I get so high, yeah. like with not very much. So what do you do with someone like me? <laughs> so go, you know, start slow, go low. Don't You don't have to do a lot. Sometimes a couple puffs and see how that goes. Uh, then I, well, standing by, I always recommend having a CBD tincture because yeah. CBD tincture is a wonderful antidote for being too high. That's good to know. Yeah, it, it has not only anti-inflammatory, but it has anti-anxiety and anti-psychotic really mm -hmm. properties, a high quality CBD tincture, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah. Could, I think I, I react the opposite of a lot of people. I mean, once a friend came over, I was on tour and we were in Arizona and she brought some Maui Wowie from Hawaii. We got so baked and everyone's like, oh, they're just basking. And I'm like, let's do an aerobics class. And I was, <laughs> and I was like, come on, let's go. And one by one, they like all fell out. And then I finished the class and then passed out by the pool and woke up in a puddle of slobber and then wait, ate a half a cow at the Attractive. That's, that's an attractive <laughs> sight, Durga. Um, hey, it's the truth. <laughs> hey, Kara, I have a question. So like when you do these sessions, like do people sign up for five sessions or is it one and done? It is in process. I'm principally a hypnotherapist. So I'm working with people uh, on a continual basis with hypnotherapy and the cannabis journey is, is kind of a turbocharged hypnotherapy session in, in, in that it's three and a half to four hours. Um, some people choose to do more than one and some people feel complete with just one and, and have really moved what they've wanted to do. So I have a question. Um, out of all the clients that you've had, what is the number one reason people come to you for hypnotherapy? Hmm. That's a good question. I think I connect with people to help them release anxiety and to move towards greater love and joy and feeling of freedom in their life, a feeling of alignment. That's great. I was waiting for sex addiction, alcohol, yeah. drugs. <laughs> and here she is, like Cara, like a true goddess, you know, just everything, it's love, love, love. It, it kind of is. <laughs> just <laughs> it is my jam, as they say. <laughs> so guys, I mean, we've got 15 minutes. Anybody else have any questions or things to impart, you know, on Carol or with, with each other, share any journeys, any experimentations, anyone? I wish oh. I had some, but. I know, Mara, you're the, I, I thought Cheryl, have you, Mara, have you ever done pot ever? Never. Ever? Never. I haven't anything? done that. No, Have you nothing. done anything? Do you, you have you done alcohol? No, I've, I've, of course I've, I've gotten tipsy a little, but I've never been drunk. Wow. Mm. I know she's like the virgin. She's like a virgin. I'm like Sandra D from Greece. Like, <laughs> she turns over to the Unfort end, you know, Unfortunately, I'm like Rizzo. So, you know, yeah. oh, I'm, <laughs> I love you for that. Can I add something? Yeah. So I, I, I want to just really add this disclaimer in about psychedelics and, and cannabis that it's not for everyone. Um, it's psychedelics is not a panacea. We're in this psychedelic renaissance where everybody's like, yeah, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna cure me of this, that, and the other thing. So it's really important that people do the research and there's good reason to be uh, wary of them with, you know, you wanna have the right set, setting, support and your skills, you know, a mindfulness practice. So there are other ways of achieving psychedelic states that do not include substance, entheogens, mm -hmm. such as breath work is super powerful, holotropic breath work, uh, transformational breath work, there, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, and there's also cannabis assisted breath work, but, but here we're talking about things that are alternative to sub substance. Um, so breath work is one. Float tanks are another. You, if you remember the Altered mm -hmm. States movie yep. from the day that was about John Lilly. So float tanks can get really? you- 
Yeah. Yeah. Based on that. Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh. And um, so, and hypnosis, of course, hypnosis can create a non-ordinary state of, of, uh, of being. Um, and certainly for the people who are uh, easily hypnotizable at Durga, I'd love to, to try that on you sometime. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and, and other ways of getting into ecstatic states, dancing, uh, ecstatic dance is, is another meditation, certainly. I'm sure I'm forgetting a couple here, but that's that pardon? Tantric sex. Tantric. Yeah. <laughs> Mara's all so quiet about shit. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, tantric sex. <laughs> Definitely. It's true. Oh my God. I like rough, but that's okay. They have to touch me. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I mean, so funny because when I was, I mean, I've known Carol for a while and, um, and you know, you know, like I told you guys before and I'd mentioned Cara myself um, when Wendy was on the show. I mean, we're part of this Goddess International camp and, and it's all about really love, love, love and self growth and, and, um, and, you know, I don't know. It's a it's a mission. It's our mission statement. It's a, it's a, it's a movement. Um, we're not a religion. If we or maybe we should be in be <laughs> we see and make a shit ton of money. So, um, but um, but you know, I love the way that everyone on this show and especially my goddess sisters come in and they challenge. We challenge each other, and we help each other grow. And and I've always referred to between the sheets as not just a podcast. Is it's a springboard. It's my therapy session to talk about things, to learn, to grow, um, not to judge. And um, and again, we've done another amazing show. So thank you, Carol. Thank you so much for being here. Um, Carol came on last minute because we had another person and they canceled. And I happen to be reading this book called, oh, sorry, mm. Food of the Gods. Oh, and I thought, I don't know. And all of a sudden when she canceled, I said, I have to call Carol. <laughs> it, like, just like that. Not that it has anything to do with Carol, but it's like that intuitiveness is like call Carol and she was available. And then we started on this sort of discussion, but um, there's a list of books like Food of the Gods, which um, is older um, and a little dated. But um, I put on my Facebook page the list of a million books that was recommended by Carol as well. So if you want to look at those, um, look on my Facebook page. Um, and uh, Carol, where can people find you, your website? Um, how, you know, are you doing anything in the future that you are being acknowledged for or any sort of seminars that you'd like our audience to know about? So let's see. Yes. Okay. Website, www.optimize.life. Um, Monday, this coming Monday night, I will have an integration circle, a psychedelic integration circle, and that is through Interspace Integration. We have a Facebook page and it's on a meetup page and it's on my Facebook Optimize Life page as well. Um, I'll be doing a hypnosis and guided imagery uh, meetup on Tuesday night. That's also on my Facebook page and that will be uh, my business Facebook page, Optimize Life. And that is for health and healing, radiant health and healing. Then uh, taking a couple weeks off in August and going to do some more trainings. Um, the next cannabis circle, the next online cannabis circle will be the last weekend in September. Thank you. Thank you so much. This no, is thank you. Fun. You guys are super fun. That was really interesting. You know, what, you know what's really fun is I mean, I I the Zoom thing, I get it. I can't wait till I have everybody back in the studio. Aww. Because yeah. technically, technically, um, the studio's open. And um, podcasting is considered um, an essential business if you disseminate any sort of entertainment or information. So um, I've, I've said this last month, but um, I'm going to reach out to you guys. I think the third show of the month, I want, I do want to do it in studio. And who those who want to come, you know, you can wear masks. Um, but um, one thing that I think is lacking on this Zoom, and I'm glad is um, energy. 
Um, I miss all of you. I miss feeding off of you. I think this is great what we have, but um, I like to feel your energy and I think it's more spontaneous and quite frankly, it's a better show. So, um, so I'm gonna be emailing you girls and whoever wants to come in the studio with me. I'm in, so. depending on how I feel. <laughs> no, I know, because Georgia's having surgery. Um, yeah. So, Cara, where can people find you? I know you have to get back to your party. I have a party. So, I, I know you have a party. So, where can people find you? What are you up to? And then you can just pop away. Well, I'm on, you know, normal Facebook. I was, did just do another radio podcast recently with my old radio chums from London on a different uh, 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 podcast called The Unexplained.tv. And normally it's about the supernatural and all sorts of different things but we had we talked about our ghost stories and that was lovely for me because it was all the guys I used to be on the radio with 20 years ago in London oh fun that's the unexplained.tv you can find that thank you and Mara what's going on with you where can people find you tell us tell us your Instagram account tell us all that stuff okay so um Mara Shane Art is my Instagram which is m-a-r-a Shane, S H A N E, <laughs> art. Um, and then you can go to my website, which is marashaneart.com. And then Mara Shane Custom Designs on Facebook. Thank you. Um, I just want to put a disclaimer, ladies. If you don't feel comfortable coming in the studio, I still want you to participate. We'll still hook you guys up to Zoom. So it's not like either it's either or. Yeah. I just, you know, everyone can do whatever they want. So, but I just want you all included. Cheryl, what's going on with you? Where are your seminars and your and your readings and your your all your stuff? I'm always doing something on Zoom these days. So, or Facebook Live even, but you can find me through my website, mediumcheryl.com. I'll be doing an event online next month with Thomas John, just to let you know, and some other mediums. There'll be a day of education and, and readings. So just check all that uh, information out on my website, mediumcheryl.com. And that's how I found you because yeah. I, I called Thomas and Thomas was booked from now to two years from now. And he said, call Cheryl Aww, for reading. So nice. So, Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Kimberly Sanchez, you're living. Where are you living now? <laughs> I am back in Long Beach. I, I have a great place one block from the beach which is amazing to me to be able to be at the water all the time I love it um yeah I, other than that I'm off of everything I'm not on Facebook I'm not on Instagram I'm having a little break <laughs> did Faith was it social media detox yeah a little bit I'm, I'm just kind of like detoxing from just a lot of stuff so. I know. Well, I love you. You know, I love you so much. <laughs> I, miss I you. love you too. <laughs> and I know, Carl, I haven't seen you forever. I know. Oh. We'll talk offline Thank about you. next. Hey, ladies, next weekend, we could possibly do a um, COVID compliant um, get together. We'll talk. Um, Durga McBroom, what are you been well, up to? Where are you um, going? What's going on? My sister and I, uh, my sister Lorelai and I just released an album. And I don't know if you'll be able to see, it's called Black Floyd. That's nice. us. Nice. Because we nice. both sang with Pink Floyd. And um, half the songs are Pink Floyd covers uh, and half the songs are original. Some written with some of the touring members of Pink Floyd, including John Karen and Guy Pratt. And my sister wrote a song with Lemmy from Motorhead that's on here also. Uh, you can I find it. I know, uh, Lemmy. we all know Lemmy. <laughs> yeah, well, Lemmy, Lemmy was a sweetheart. And yeah. his son, actually, his son just had a, had a son. So I'm Lemmy's grandson's godmother. Isn't that oh. um, but you can find me on Facebook. Uh, I also have my fan page on Facebook. The McBroom Sisters are on Facebook and themcbroomsisters.com. Thank you. Um, thank you, my beautiful, beautiful women. Um, Delicia, FYI. She uh, was going to be on tonight. Uh, she, I, she's um, she's she's ill, but um, I don't know how ill she is. Um, mm -hmm. I think she said she went to the hospital, but I do not know if um, she's home or she stayed. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to reach out to her on behalf of us or if you ladies want to. But uh, Delicia, we missed you today and we are sending you love and light and healing prayers. Um, <clears throat> um, 
And uh, Jenny McNulty, you can find her even though she's not here. She's on Facebook doing her thing. Um, but everybody, I just want to say thank you all for supporting Between the Sheets um, podcast, even though my friend Jackie says it's a video cast, not a podcast. Um, <laughs> but I thank you for supporting us and coming back week after week. You can always find the shows the next day, which is tomorrow on YouTube and all the other audio platforms. Um, it's Between the Sheets with Gay and Bruno on YouTube and the same with all the audio platforms. I'll do some watch parties and stuff. So join in, please tell your friends, please share. Um, you know, it's always about peace, love, harmony, understanding, gratitude, empathy, um, just love. It's all about love. And if you start from that, um, I think, you know, it's self-love first. You know, you have to self-love first before you can love others if you don't have the capability to love yourself. So you have to start working on yourself first before you can even extend to even give that to others. So um, I let you go. I thank you again. We'll be back in two weeks, the third Friday and um, be safe. We will, you know, Cara's going to hate me, but you know, some of you wear the damn masks, um, especially if you go out in public. I mean, you know, just, just try and be, you know, try and be just conscious here. Um, it's not about you. It's about the others. Really? Um, but, you know, seriously, like, let's take care of each other. I mean, the world sucks because we don't take care of each other. And if, like I said, if there was a little bit more love, then maybe we wouldn't, you know, be in a lot of situations. Um, fuck Trump. Vote blue. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's what I'm saying. Um, and, oh, I thought, Kari, you were going to put like that, that sort of sex thing with the ball in your mouth. Sorry. I didn't know what you were pulling out now. I was, I, I have one of those. Um, oh, in any event, everybody, I love you guys. Thanks for joining. Uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you, Carol. I love you. you. So Thanks much. for coming in. You. And everybody, as we always know, we sign off the show. Namaste. Okay. Namaste. Be safe. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Kurt, cue the music. Thanks, Thank Kurt. Thank you, Carol. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.